Well, praise God. Hey, praise God. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for, praise God, another opportunity the Lord has granted me to, praise God, come and share with you the Word of God on this Saturday. Praise God. What is it? Uh, Feb, Feb, uh, 25th day of, of February. Just about, mine is just about gone. Praise God. But we thank God for the opportunity He has given me. Praise God, the mindset and the wisdom, the knowledge he's given me to come and praise God and share his word with you today. Praise God, I'm Pastor James A. Dansby of Great Commission Fellowship here in Birmingham, Alabama. Praise God, once again, declaring unto you that Christ is the answer. He's the only answer to the problems that we're facing today. Praise God, we have only put our trust in him. Acts, and you shall receive. Seek, and you shall find. The Bible said, knock, and the door shall be open. We have only to ask. You have not, Christ said, because you ask not. And then when we do ask, we ask amiss, the Bible says. In other words, for the wrong reason for our asking. But if we ask in faith, praise God, in sincerity, then I believe and I know according to the word of God, God will answer our prayers. Praise God. Now, but I hope, praise God, that you're ready to study God's Word with me today on this Saturday. Hopefully, you've gotten your chores out of the way, and you praise God, you're ready to settle down and, uh, and, and study with me today. Get your Bibles out, get your pens out, get your paper out. Praise God, because we're going to, praise God, we're, we're going to do a double header today. Uh, the Lord has led me to kind of chop this message up. It's a little bit longer than usual. So we're going to do it in two parts, two parts. going to give you a chance to take a little break after the first part. And hopefully you'll, praise God, you'll watch with me and the Lord for one hour. That's what Christ said. I hope you can watch just one hour. Praise God. But now let's go to Second Timothy now. Let's get down to business here. Praise God. Got your Bibles out? Praise God. Go down to Second Timothy. In the New Testament there. And we're going to look at verse, uh, chapter number two. Chapter two. Let's let me dial it up myself here. Second Timothy. Yes, we want, uh, chapter two. And we're going to read verses three and four. Three and four. Praise God. Here is the Apostle Paul writing a letter to Timothy, uh, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Of course, God is speaking to Paul. Paul speaking to Timothy and the believers that he was ministering to. Uh, 2 Timothy 2 and verse 3. And it reads, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Verse 4 says, No man, the Lord says, No man that wore it entangle himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who had called him or chosen him to be a soldier. Now I'm going to read that. I'm going to read those two verses again. Very important. Praise God. Second Timothy two, verse three and four. Paul encourages believers. Praise God. He says, therefore thou endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. And then he said, no man that wore it, Hmm? In this warfare, entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who had called him, praise God, or chosen him to be a soldier. Let's pray. Father, I bless you today. I thank you, Lord, for this. Another opportunity, Lord, you granted me to come to share your word, praise God, on this Saturday afternoon. Now, Lord, I pray the hot power of the Holy Spirit might go before me, Oh, praise God. Break up the fallow ground today. Lord, yeah, prepare hearts to receive this word that you placed in my heart today. And Lord, I believe and I know in my heart that your word would not return void, but it will and shall accomplish that for which you have sent it. And Lord God, I will be so mindful to give you all the praise. I give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Praise God. Uh, he says here again, praise God, if you have uh, been called to the warfare, uh, we should not uh, get ourselves entangled in the affairs of this life. So now our subject today is that we are called out from this world's affairs. We are called out. God has called us out from the affairs of this world. And this is part nine, part nine in this series uh, overall, the overall topic in the series being that God, he, he instructs us on how to live in this world. But now specifically, he's called us here today uh, 
out from the affairs of this world or of this life. Praise God. Now, we 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 have here, praise God, an important warning from Paul. And this is very important as believers. If you're a believer today, he gives us a very important warning. And it's specifically for those who say that we love the Lord. Praise God, I'm saved. I love the Lord. And it's concerning our entanglement. Mm. In the affairs of this life, he's warning us against the entanglement uh, in the affairs of this life. He calls us soldiers in this, uh, praise God, in that third verse there, he calls us soldiers in the army of the Lord. And that's what we are. That's who we are. We're soldiers. And as soldiers, praise God, we must endure the, the hardness of this Christian life. It's not easy. Praise God. It's only easy because of his yoke that's upon us. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, Christ said, because I'm what? Praise God. He is, he is my yoke is easy. He said, my burden is light. But now we've been called as soldiers in the army of the Lord. We've been called, praise God, to not to be entangled in the affairs of this life. We're soldiers. We have to endure. Is that right? Now, but now he also, in uh, in this uh, in that fourth verse, he refers to uh, the warfare. He's uh, the warfare that uh, he calls our uh, life here on earth as a believer. He he calls it a warfare. Mm, a warfare, pray God. And now the warfare, uh, we, we have adversaries here. Amen. We're in a warfare against adversary. And the main one is the devil himself. Praise God, the devil himself, the God hater himself, we are his adversary, no doubt about that. And then he got an ungodly army in this world too. Yes, praise God. He got recruits, you know. Yes, in a way we're recruiting. We're, we're, we've been called to go forth and to uh, compel and to invite men into the presence of the Lord. And the devil, he, he's recruiting also. So now we, we are in a warfare, is what Paul says here, against the devil himself, against the ungodly godly army that he's recruited upon this earth and as well as this present evil world by itself. Praise God. The whole world alive in wickedness is what the apostle said. And don't, don't forget though, and then that's our own flesh. Oh boy. The flesh. We're still in the flesh. I'm saved. Praise God. I'm saved. I'm saved. I know I'm saved. I'm, I'm going to go to heaven when I die. But I know that this flesh is still an adversary also. Praise God. So now, if you look at Ephesians, though, let's go to Ephesians. And uh, after we realize, now, we realize we're soldiers. Paul said we're soldiers. And we're to be careful of the entanglement of the affair with the affairs of this world, of this life here. And we must endure hardness as a good soldier, he says, because we're in a warfare against the devil, against the devil's people here on earth, and against the world itself, and then against the flesh. That's against what's inside of me and you, even though we're saved. Praise God. We're not perfect. We're not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. And we know that. Praise God. But look at Ephesians 6 and 10. Let's find Ephesians 6 and 10, Paul's letter to the uh, Christians at Ephesus. 6 and 10, uh, Paul admonished us. He said, finally, my brethren, he says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Be strong. Put on the whole armor of God. You know, but you got to dress up for this battle here. You know, we can't, we don't fight it the way, we, we don't fight it with the, with the equipment that we had before we got saved. God gives us armor. We're, we're soldiers in the army. Praise God. When I went in the Air Force, they gave me the equipment. God has equipped us. What he says in verse 11 there, Ephesians 6, 11. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles the entanglements, the traps of the devil. Hmm? And he says in verse 12, for we wrestle not against what? Flesh and blood. Huh? But against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, he says, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Therefore, wherefore, therefore, he says in verse 13, take unto you the whole armor. Praise God, the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil days. In the, in the evil days are today. And having done all, after you have done all in this, to still stand is what he says here. So now, what, what are the apostles saying here? He said to us basically as Christians, as Christians, uh, every day, praise God, every day, every hour, every moment, we face trials. 
We face temptations. We face tribulations every day. Therefore, Paul exhorts the believers, praise God, uh, to war a good warfare. Praise God. If you're going to war, if you're going to be in a warfare, there's war a good warfare, he says. And then he said, we ought to fight the good fight. Fight the good fight of faith. Paul says we ought to stand fast. Stand fast in the faith. And to be steadfast, unmovable, he says, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Praise God. Stand. Oh, hallelujah. He exhorted us. Praise God. And, and, and he wants us to understand the fact that we are definitely in a warfare and that we are our soldiers, and we're called by God not to voluntarily entangle ourselves in the affairs of this life. Mm, many have to the detriment of their uh, spiritual life. Many have. Praise God. But now, next, uh, Paul tells us that we must not, praise God, we must not, He is, he, and he specifies this in, 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 in this text here, entangle ourselves in the affairs of this life. And, and the reason being now, the reason being is because he says that we might please our Lord Jesus Christ, that we might please him who had called us. Who? That's what it's all about. It's about pleasing the Lord. Huh? He's been gracious to us, haven't he? He saved me. Huh? He delivered me from the perils, from the pitfalls, from the uh, situation that I had gotten myself into that brought great sorrow in my life. He delivered me. So now what should I do? I should be pleasing him. That's what Paul said. That's why we don't, don't entangle ourselves in the affairs of this life, that we might please him who called us, the Lord Jesus Christ. He called us and we are, he's our commander in chief. Hallelujah. Praise God. He is. And we should be, uh, 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 I mean, raring to, to, to please him and to, to, to make him proud of us to show ourselves thankful for what the Lord has done in our life. Praise God. He's enlisted us. Praise God as soldiers in his service today. And when I, you know, when I, uh, when I voluntarily, and I did, when I voluntarily enlisted in the Air Force in, in 1965, it was 65, I was 17 years old uh, when I went into the Air Force. And I did so. Why did I do that? I did it because I wanted to serve my country, so to speak. So I thought at that time to serve my country. And when I was drafted now, in the same point, same, by the same token, when I was drafted into the Lord's Army, so you drafted in God's army. I volunteered for the Air Force, but now God don't take no volunteers. Huh? He drafts you. He drafts us. Praise God. But when I was drafted into the uh, the Lord's army, it was then. Praise God. And praise God. And still is today. Uh, the reason was to serve Him. I I I I, I was drafted to serve Him. Him who has redeemed me from my sins. Praise God. Thank God for Jesus. He redeemed me. He redeemed you, if you're saved, by his blood. Praise God, by his blood. And praise God, he's justified us. Praise God, through his resurrection from the grave. Oh, praise his name. Hallelujah. Now, therefore, now, therefore, therefore, it's only fitting now. It's only fitting that I reject and resist any entanglements, the traps, hmm, that are set in the affairs of this life. Uh, it's only reasonable that we do that, hmm? that we be not entangled with the affairs of this life. Because, see, I want to one day be able, I want to one day be able to say, as Enoch said, you know, Enoch, that old, old prophet of God, uh, many, many years ago. Did you, don't you remember what Enoch said a long time ago? He said, now, uh, I know I please God. Oh, praise God. I want to be able to say, I please God. I did what God told me to do. He called me to salvation. He called me to teach and preach his word. And with the, to the last breath in my body, I did exactly what God told me to do. I pleased him. That's what I want to be. I, I want to be able to say, I please God. Praise God. And, and these are the choices, really, that we have. If you're a Christian, then you have, you have the choice of being able to say, I please God. Or you please the world. Which one? Hmm? I please God. Did you please God? Have you pleased God? Are you pleasing God? Or are you entangled in the affairs of this life so much so that you cannot please God? Hmm? You can't serve two mammons. You can't serve God in the world at the same time. You got to choose ye this day whom you're going to serve. It's simple as that. The word of God is so simple. But now, 
When Paul says we are not to entangle ourselves in the affairs of this life, he's talking about uh, the, the many activities that, praise God, we have in this life here. Many activities, there's many pleasures and many kind of pleasures and many opportunities to uh, be distracted from the Word of God. Hmm? Oh boy, and the devil got a whole bag of tricks, a bag of uh, enjoyments and, uh, that, uh, that distract us from the Word of God today. We find time for everything but the Word of God. Is that you, Christian? Is that you? Is that you? Praise God. But now, along with the uh, uh, activities and the, and the pleasures of this life, but then there are the anxieties that uh, seem to take us away from God. Huh? Praise God. When we let these things distract us, that means that our attention has been refocused uh, or, or, or turned from focus from the Lord over to the wrong things in this life. Amen. That's what it means. And although we must live in this world, yes. Oh, yes, undoubtedly. Mm -hmm. In the world, but not a part of the world. That's what the Lord said. We have to live in this world. We have to mingle in this world. We can't get around that. But Paul warns us of not being totally mm -hmm, and overly involved in this world of ours. Some of them gone too far, way too far, praise God, to the point where what we're doing is we're grieving the Holy Spirit. And the, power, the Bible tells us to grieve not the Holy Spirit, whereby you are sealed, he sealed us, until the day of redemption, we're not to grieve him. And we do grieve him when we let our attention uh, be focused upon those things that we call the affairs of this life. And so many that you uh, of us are are guilty right now. Praise God, we're, we're guilty. But Paul warns us. Look at 1 Corinthians then. He warns us not to grieve the Holy Spirit, not to allow the enemy mm, to take our attention from God, from God's word, from the mission, from our duty, because every one of us, if you're saved, God has given you something to do. Are you doing what God called you to do? He gives talents. You know the Bible said he gives us talents, uh, some more than others. Yeah. So, and because to whom much you give, much you required. So now don't worry about that you got one, but you do have one. I hope you know what that is. What's that gift that God has given you? But now, uh, uh, we're not to grieve the Holy Spirit by, by, by getting ourselves entangled in the affairs of this life over much so. Look at uh, 1 Corinthians 7, 31. And I do encourage you, write, write these scriptures down. Praise God. And go back and later on, you can look a little bit deeper. And look what Paul says in that 31st verse there. He said, and they that use this world, and we all use this world, hmm, to what extent is the question, are you using this world? To they that use this world as not abusing it. For the fashion of this world, it passed away. That's what Paul said. Don't abuse it now. Huh? Live in it. Enjoy. Yes. But don't go overboard here. Don't go to the point of abusing the privileges, the opportunities that God has given you. Because everything in this world, he said, the fashion of this world is passing away. Huh? It's temporary. Don't get caught up in the temporary. Praise God, we concentrate upon the eternal. Hallelujah. Yes, I do myself. But now, to a certain extent now, to a certain extent, we have, many have, I'll say many have, 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 have to engage in this life to a certain extent. Many of us, we work and uh, we have to participate to, to a certain extent. But now, we must never allow ourselves, listen to me now, to become what? Entangled. That's the key word here. Entangled. Hmm? You ever seen a spider uh, 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 got a fly or some type of uh, uh, flying bug caught up in a web? Hmm? Many of us got entangled up in that web. Hmm? We got to be careful. Don't allow ourselves to be entangled. See, that's the key word there, entangled in the world of affairs. The devil has so arranged, he has so arranged this world system that we live in so as to snag us, traps everywhere, snag us, draw us. Hmm? All these activities, uh, young people, we can't get them to focus because they're constantly looking at the telephones. They can't go nowhere without a telephone. And they're constantly playing games and all kinds. See, the devil, he arranged this system so that, praise God, uh, he, he, he snags us. He, he draws 
us into the entanglements, hmm? which is altogether void of godliness. There's no godliness in it. There's no righteousness in it. And, and he, he constantly has refocused our attention. Praise God. Amen. Just like that old spider. Praise God. He, he, we're trapped. Many of us are trapped. Hmm? Praise God. He, the devil entangled us in the things of this world. He sets his trap for us. And many of you have fallen into these traps. And then, like I say, our flesh also, our flesh. Mm, that's that that's that that's that sin that we were born with. Because mm, now, yes, the devil is even responsible for that to a certain extent. But now we have to deal with that 24-7. Amen. So now we must also uh deny our own evil fleshly desires. That would come from within. Huh? That which we uh can't directly put on the devil, but we can indirectly put it on him. But now we are responsible for some of our own actions. Yes, we are. Praise God. And we are to deny our own, praise our own evil fleshly desires. God says we must, we must deny them. Amen. And we do this what? By submitting ourselves, submitting, submitting ourselves to the Lord's will, to God's will for you, for your life. Praise God. And for his good pleasure. Hallelujah. Just to see a smile on his face when he know and he see that his children, praise God, the one that he bought, bought through his blood. Praise God, are diligently carried out his commands. But now, our Lord, in his message, in his gospel message, he warns us of specific entanglements. I want to, we want to, we want to do a little bit. I want y'all, I want y'all attention uh, this afternoon here. I, we want to look at these specific entanglements that the Lord Jesus Christ himself said that we are to avoid. Hmm? Go to Mark's gospel then. Come on now, stay with me. Love, write it down. Go to Mark's gospel. Entanglement. He don't just say in a broad term, in avoid the entanglement. He tells us exactly what they are. Hmm? Let's look at Mark 4, and we're going to look at 3. Mark 4 and 3. Mark 4 and 3. Jesus said, hearken. Behold, there went out a sower to sow. And it came to pass, as he sowed, he said, some fell by the wayside. And the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. And some fell upon stony grounds, he says, where it had not much earth, no more, not much dirt. And immediately it sprang up hmm, because it had no depth. And then it says in verse 6, and when the sun was up, though, it was scotch hmm, because it had no root. It withered away. Look at verse 7. Some fell upon thorns, among the thorns, that is. Huh? And the thorns grew up, choked it, choked it, hmm? and yielded no fruit. Verse 8. Others fell on good ground and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased and brought forth some 30, some 60, and some a hundredfold. Hmm. Now, in this parable now, what are we looking at? The, the specific entanglements that the Lord warning us as believers not. To. See, we can't say, uh, we can't say that God didn't, didn't explain, uh, explain this to us like Ricky Ricardo said. God explained this very well to us. See, in this parable of the sower here and the, uh, four grounds, Jesus revealed to us here the entanglements that we must avoid in this world. Hmm? Yes, he do. He named three in particular. Hmm? And he goes on to explain these in, in, in these are uh, entanglements in details, in details in Mark 4, later on down in that 14th verse to the 20th verse. He gives us details of what these entanglements are. Let, let's look at these details. Let's look at it. Let's, let's go on down. You should be there in that chapter, chapter 4, Mark 4. Let's go on down. Let's look at some of these, the, the explanations that Christ gives and the descriptions that Christ gives of these entanglements, what they look like, what they look like. Hmm? Praise God. Okay, now look at verse 14 now. We're down to 14, Mark 4, 14. I hope you're with me now. Praise God. He said, the source or the word. Hmm? And these by the wayside, wayside, where the word is sown. But when they are heard, Satan coming immediately, and he taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. Hmm? Look at 16. And these are they likewise, which are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word, hmm? 
sit up in church every Sunday, heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness. Oh, they, 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 get, they say more hallelujahs than I do. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But now verse 17, but they have no roots. They have no roots. Hmm. Have you ever seen plants up on top of a house? They'll grow up on the house sometime because, but they got shallow, no roots. And they're going to die. So I ain't going to hit them and they're going to die. They have no roots in themselves and so endure but for a time. After when afflictions, when the sun afflictions, persecutions arise for the word's sake, immediately they're going to be offended. Hmm? Look at verse 18. These are they which are sown among the thorns, such as hear the word. Now they heard it too. I sit up in church. But then the cares of this world, hmm, the deceitfulness of riches, the lust of other things entering in, choke the word. And it becomes unfruitful. Mm. Verse 20. These are they which are sown on good ground. Such as hear the word. Receive the word. And bring forth fruit. Some thirtyfold. Some sixtyfold. And some a hundredfold. This is Christ's explanation. Of what the entanglements are. Now in this parable now. In this parable. The seed here is the word of God. The seed is the word of God. These four different grounds that we just looked at, they represent the four categories of, uh, of hearts, of the hearts of men that hear the word of God. It, it represents their, uh, uh, the, the four different kinds of hearts, souls, minds that hear the word of God. Hmm? And these four different responses uh, to, the, to the word of God are here also. Hmm? To God's word, to the wisdom of God's word. Praise God. See, the Lord has commissioned, again, all of us believers to teach, to preach, to testify and, uh, of his word. All of us have a command to go forth huh? and to share this word, put this word into the ears and the hearts of all men. Go ye therefore to all the world, all the world, and preach, teach, testify to my gospel. Praise God. And each time we do this, each time we do this, if we be obedient, there will be one of these four responses. Always going to be a response. And one of these four that are listed right here in this parable. Hmm? That first ground, remember that first ground, that first heart, that first response. He called it the wayside ground, the wayside hearts. That's what he called them. So, see, these are hearts that are hardened against the gospel of Jesus Christ 24 7 all the time. Hmm? Praise God. They reject the gospel message. Hmm? While at the same time allowing the devil to continuously blind their minds so that the light of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ, praise God, could not shine upon them. Oh, he wants to keep them in total darkness. That's a group out there. That's a group out there. I hope it's not you that the devil got you locked up. He got you locked up. You, 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 you get mad just hearing somebody even preach the gospel. Hmm? Praise God. So that he don't want that light to shine upon you. Praise God. See, these souls are, are, are unashamedly destined for hell. Hmm? That's the wayside ground. The wayside hearers is what he called them. But now that second ground is the stony ground hearers. The stony ground hearers, he called them. And these are, uh, are those hearts who, who receive the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ, so to speak. But they do not allow the truth. And the wisdom of God to take deep root. You need deep roots here. Praise right? God, you can't have no shallow root. They don't allow it to take deep roots in their hearts. Uh, in other words, their roots are shallow, very shallow. So when afflictions come, or as the sun, see, says the sun start beating upon it. When afflictions come and persecutions come, they will be overcome. Praise right? God. And they will spiritually wither away. That's a large part of people that are in the church today. This is their condition. Hmm? But then the third ground was the thorny ground. The thorny ground hearers. Hmm? These are the hearts of the believers who, who, who receive the word of God and they allow it to take deep roots within them. Yes, they allow it. But they also allow the thorns. There it is. Mm, you can't serve two masters. They, 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 they allow the thorns in this world to take root in their hearts at the same time. Praise God, same time. 
They never completely separate themselves from the word of God, from the world, that is. They never really truly come out. They play with fire. Yes, they do. And eventually, what don't say that you play with fire, you got to get burned. Hmm? They call them thorny ground hearers. But now that fourth ground was the good ground. The good ground. Mm, these are the hearts of the believers, he says, who receive the word and allow it to take deep root down inside of them. Praise God and render, they render complete obedience to God's word. Now, we're not perfect, but we do all we can to obey God's word. Praise God. And to bring forth spiritual fruit to the glory of God. That's what we, that's our goal there. Some 30 fold, some 60 fold, and some a hundred fold. Is the way he described four grounds here. But now, again, God, God has called us out from the affairs of this life. Okay, that's our subject now, right? That's our subject, huh? Now, so from this point, we want to concentrate upon that third ground, the thorny ground. This is this one that's so important here today. This is the place where I found a lot of the church folks at today. Uh, that third ground, that third heart uh, that uh, 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 is described as being thorny ground there. Uh, it, in, it, it which identified the, the entrapments of the world. Hmm? which are, are, are the affairs of this world. That's what, we can interchange them there. And although this group allows the word, huh? these on the ground here, they allow the word to take deep root. Yes, they do. Deep roots within them, deep down in their heart. But because they have one foot in God's word, one foot in the church, huh? the other foot in the clubhouse on Saturday night, or somewhere else in a dark place or in the world. One foot in the word of God on Sunday and, uh, and another foot in the world uh, uh, and, and in his affairs. Huh? Therefore, they are what? As the Bible says, what the Bible says, these type of people, they are ever learning, but are never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. They are ever sitting on the word of God saying, amen, amen. But they never. Never, never, never. Oh, I've seen them. I've seen them. I, I see them all the time. Never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. That's 2 Timothy 3, 7. Praise God. But now, therefore, this group of thorny ground hearers here, uh, this group, they are ensnared by the entanglements of this life because they got one foot, one foot in the Bible, one foot in the earth, huh? trying to live a, a double life. Uh, praise God. And, 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 and by and by, uh, this wor these worldly affairs going to choke the word. This involvement in the worldly affairs is going to choke the word or, or, or we could say abort the word. Yes. Mm -hmm. In other words, like a woman, they cannot hold it. They cannot hold that uh, word, that word in, 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 in their wounds of their heart. They can't hold that word. Mm -hmm. They abort the word. Uh, you just tangle up there. You you trying to you trying to live a double life. You're not a spy, are you? Huh? Look at Luke eight there. Look at Luke eight fourteen. Luke eight fourteen says, uh, uh, he he described them like this here. They bring forth no fruit unto perfection. They bring no fruit forth uh, <coughs> unto perfection. In other words, they're just like the the average church folks today who are constantly experiencing spiritual abortions constantly, all the time. The, 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 the choking, the life is being choked out of them. God, the life of God's word goes in and their worldliness chokes that word every time simply because they refuse to come out from among them. I want the Lord say, come out from among them, from among them and be ye separate, said the Lord. Touch not. But they won't do it. They won't do it. Church, church is full of people. Mm, praise God. You, it's Saturday. Oh, well, boy, Saturday night. Mm, and you're getting ready. You're getting ready. Mm, you're getting ready. You'll come in tonight early, sometime early in the morning, get your church clothes ready, and you, oh, you're doing double duty, aren't you, huh? But now, 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 I'm going to, I'm going to stop here for a few minutes now. Like I said, this is a, I'm double hitting today. I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop here because I want to give you a, an opportunity to take a break here, just a break before we proceed into the, the part 10, because we got to get deeper into this here subject here. Uh, and so this, there's going to be a continuation of this same subject here. But like I said, I want to give you a chance to get a break. But first I want, I want to show you three categories. I'm going to show you a little bit something else here. Let me show you three categories of, of, of the worldly entanglements. Also we call 
Thorny grounds now, and the cause thorny grounds that we must, as believers, be aware of. We must be aware of. I want, I want, to, I want you to, I want, to, I want to list them so you, when we come back with this part, the second part of this this particular message, then you you'll be looking forward to uh, zeroing in upon those entanglements that are so detrimental to the Christian health. Look at Matthew 13. Look at them now. Matthew 13, 22. Listen, let's look at them again as they are, 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 are a little bit plainer identified. Matthew 13, 22. Christ says, he that, he also that receives seed among the thorns. Watch that. Is he that heareth the word and the cares of this life. Number one. And the deceitfulness of riches. Number two, choke the word. And that person becomes unfruitful. Hmm? The third one is found in Luke 18. Go on to Luke 18. You'll see that third one, that third entanglement that we're going to look at when we come back. I thought we let you take a break here. Praise God. Look at that third one there. It, it is found right there in Luke 8, chapter 14, verse. Hmm? Jesus said, and that which fell among the thorns are they which, when they have heard the word, heard the word, sit up in church, heard the word, but they go out and are choked with the cares of this life and the pleasures of this life. Hmm? The pleasures, and therefore they bring forth no fruit unto perfection. That's what the Word of God says. So now, after, after we take a break here, we're going to take a break. Praise God. The pastor's going to take just a minute or so to collect himself. And, uh, and, and, and I'm going to dive deep. I'm going to dive deep. I'm going to dive deep into these three worldly entanglements that have caused so many church folks today not to grow, not to have no joy, not to have no real peace, not to be saved. We're going to dive deep, dive deep. And again, the three are, what are they? The cares of this life, mm. the deceitfulness of riches, the pleasures of this life. Let us pray. Father, I bless you today. Thank you, Lord, for this, another opportunity that you've given me, Lord, to come to share your word today. Now, Lord, I pray the power of the Holy Spirit might move upon the hearts of your people today. Lord, let us look into the mirror of your word and let us see not who we have perceived ourselves to be, but let us see ourselves in the true light of the gospel of Jesus Christ. As you see us, let us see ourselves, Lord. Let us come to you, Lord, and ask for forgiveness. And ask that you, Lord, you would make us new creatures in Christ Jesus. And Lord, we'll give you all the praise. We'll give you all the glory. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Now, take a break. Take a break now. This is part nine. We're going to proceed to part 10. Hmm? By the time you take a break, uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, part 10 is going to be up on your tablet there somewhere. And you can go from 9 right into 10. Amen? Praise God. And we'll see you in a few. Praise God. After the break. May God bless you. May God keep you. Is my prayer today. Amen.